Yeah, I know, seeing these monitors side by side does totally make you want to buy an OLED monitor. Like, honestly, how can this super contrasty and crisp looking image not make you want to buy an OLED? In comparison, the VA panel, and especially the IPS panel, look a bit miserable to be honest. However, I wouldn't make a video like this if just buy an OLED was the answer. OLED is not the best panel tech for everyone and every use case. Not even if we pretend for a bit that OLED wasn't much more expensive than LCD. Because OLED monitors have quite a few drawbacks and there are very good reasons to buy a good old IPS or VA monitor instead. And sometimes even one with a TN panel. So you might find yourself deciding between similar monitors with different panel types, just like these three. All of them are 27 inch 1440p monitors with a 240Hz plus refresh rate. The biggest difference between them really is the different panel technology, which has quite the impact on how good or bad these monitors are for certain things like gaming, watching videos or productivity. But there is also a huge difference in price. This OLED monitor costs roughly as much as this VA and IPS monitor combined. And all of these three monitors have essentially the same specs. So OLED is pretty expensive and probably will continue to be more expensive than LCD for a long time. That's definitely something to keep in mind when comparing these monitors side by side. Though this might be money well spent if you like watching videos or movies on your monitor. Like take a look at how much worse dark scenes look on the IPS monitor on the left. The scene from Lost in Space on Netflix is supposed to be pretty dark with parts of the image basically being black as we can see on the OLED monitor. On the IPS though, the forest in the background just looks grey. Slightly off axis, the so called IPS glow makes this even look worse. Even the black bar on top is now pretty much gone on the IPS whereas the OLED looks super crisp no matter the angle. The VA monitor that we have here shows another typical defect of LCDs, backlight bleed. In the bottom right corner there is this bright spot which is caused by a not so uniform backlight. A bit unfortunate but to some degree every IPS, VA or TN panel monitor will have this issue. You might get lucky and get a super uniform monitor that doesn't have much backlight bleed at all but chances are that you're gonna see at least very faint bright spots when the image is completely black and you're sitting in a fairly dark room. This typically is less of an issue with VA panel monitors. It's not like they're using more uniform backlights. But as the black level of VA is much better than on IPS or TN, brighter spots typically just aren't that noticeable on VA monitors. So if we ignore that bright spot that we got on this specific monitor, the VA panel actually looks pretty good in the scene thanks to its pretty high contrast. The monitor we're using here has a contrast ratio of over 3000 to 1, which is fairly representative of a good VA panel and about three times as high as what we're getting from a typical IPS. So it's not surprising that the VA monitor can hold its ground against the OLED much better than the IPS can. With normal SDR content, a VA panel monitor like this one actually does a really good job. Dark areas aren't looking quite as crisp as on the OLED, but even in this super dark scene from Lost in Space, the overall image really doesn't look too bad next to the OLED. HDR though is a whole different story. Challenging HDR content like this really shows the strengths of OLED. The VA monitor has to crank up its backlight to show these super bright highlights, which in return lifts up the black level. The greyish, somewhat cloudy background really doesn't make this footage look great. OLED though is a self lit panel tech, so it just turns off the pixels that are supposed to be black without affecting the pixels that are at full blast. So for HDR, plain normal LCD monitors really don't stand a chance against OLED. You'd at least need an LCD with a mini LED backlight to even compete with OLED in this area. But mini LED versus OLED really is a comparison that deserves its own separate video. Plain normal IPS or VA monitors are no competition for OLED when it comes to HDR. For SDR though, at least the VA monitor does a pretty good job. Sure, dark scenes don't look quite as good on the VA monitor as on the OLED, but at least better than on the IPS. So why not just ditch IPS, get a VA panel monitor and save a bunch of money? Well, VA panels typically are pretty slow, which can ruin your gaming experience, but also causes problems you can notice when browsing through the web, for instance. And when I'm referring to them as slow, I specifically mean their pixel response times and not their display lag. In fact, when it comes to the actual display lag, so the time it takes these monitors between receiving and showing an image, 
There really isn't a difference between the panel types. The IPS and VA monitor we're using for demonstration happen to be very low latency, having slightly less processing lag than the OLED, but you might as well find IPS and VAs that are a fraction of a millisecond slower. Doesn't really matter though, as a good monitor, no matter the panel type, has a negligible processing lag that you're really not gonna notice over the reflash lag and the lag that's caused by the PC. What does matter though are the pixel response times, so the time it takes the pixels to change from one color to another. And when it comes to these response times, there are substantial differences between the different panel types. LG claim that their new OLED monitor that we have here has a pixel response time of just 0.03 milliseconds. That sounds pretty fast, and relatively speaking, that's at least a whole lot faster than the one millisecond response time number that this IPS and VA monitor are supposed to have. But how does this actually look like in real life? Well, when the pixels are slow, you're gonna see that as a smeary trail behind everything that's moving across the screen, like in this slow motion shot. When there's movement, we see that the pixels don't switch from yellow to gray immediately, but instead stay yellow for a few milliseconds, which we're seeing as this faint yellow trail that's left behind. Of course, we don't wanna see any smearing and therefore fast response times are good. So is this OLED display actually as fast as the manufacturer claims? Well, it's not 0.03 milliseconds fast when using a more realistic testing methodology, but OLED is quick. That's pretty clear when we compare it to our VA monitor. That's 0.9 milliseconds for the OLED versus 6.6 .6 milliseconds for the VA monitor. And that's a pretty substantial difference. The IPS monitor manages to score closer to the OLED, but 4.4 milliseconds are still quite a bit slower. Of course, not every IPS or VA monitor will have these exact response time numbers. In fact, there are pretty wide differences between different monitors of the same panel type. But I specifically selected these monitors so that they show what level of performance you can expect from a good IPS or VA monitor. Okay, these numbers tell a pretty clear story. On paper, OLED is much faster than both IPS and VA. But how much of an impact does this actually have on using these monitors? Well, first up, all of them are usable for gaming. Even the slowest panel type of the bunch, the VA monitor, does a decent job. Though you should only really consider the fastest VA monitors for gaming if you like playing FPS games. Between the IPS and OLED monitor, the difference is more subtle. Even though the response time numbers would suggest that the OLED feels almost five times as fast as the IPS, this really doesn't translate into the actual gaming experience. I actually really struggle to pick up this difference when playing Valorant. And that's even with both monitors side by side and switching between them in a split second. Even when practicing fast flicks in the shooting range, I don't feel like the IPS is holding me back in any way. Aim training in aim labs is one of the few scenarios in which the OLED actually feels slightly faster than the IPS. This is a high contrast scene with fast movements, and here can actually see that on the OLED, the targets remain sharper and are better separated from the background when there's a lot of movement. That's kinda hard to pick up from this footage, but luckily there's Blurbus's U of O test, so I can actually show you what the difference looks like. So when we compare these images, the OLED looks indeed better than the IPS. This is clearly not a night and day difference, but the black lines and the body of the UFO are sharper on the OLED and there's less of a trail behind the UFO. The VA panel? Well, it's already a pretty good result for a VA monitor, but there's clearly more visible smear, especially in the dark track, which is super typical for the VA panel tag. And you can even notice that when scrolling through the web. Like on dark mode websites, thin text can disappear for a bit when you're scrolling too fast. The OLED on the right, of course, doesn't have this issue, as its pixels are much faster. The Gaia star map demonstrates this even better. You can really see how the VA monitor struggles to keep up. Once I stop moving the map, the stars suddenly pop up again. Now so far, both IPS and VA kinda had a hard time competing with this OLED monitor. However, there's a big catch to this OLED panel tag. OLED is amazing in a dimmed room, but as soon as you raise your window blinds, things change quite a bit. Today's OLED monitors simply don't get bright enough to overpower lots of ambient light. Expect a good LCD monitor to reach about 400 to 600 nits, but OLED is typically kept at roughly 200 to 250 nits when large areas of the screen need to be bright. And the monitors we have here demonstrate this really well. 
Living with an OLED monitor can be really frustrating if you don't have the means to block off ambient light. And as if the low brightness wasn't enough, OLED monitors that are equipped with the curved 34-inch quantum dot OLED panel show another issue when ambient light is hitting the display. These panels are lacking a polarizer, which makes them reflect ambient light in an unusual way, making the whole screen look grayish with a magenta tint. This kind of ruins the black level and makes using these monitors during the day even more challenging. So in case you see yourself using your monitor in a bright room, you're probably not going to be happy with the OLED monitors that are available today. And there is another thing that might make you want to get a good old LCD monitor, especially if you're reading a lot of text or like to do graphics design. See, from up close, a typical IPS, VA or TN panel looks like this. If you look closely, you can see the red, green and blue subpixels that compose all colors that you see on your display. Most LCD monitors look like this, and you can see that the IPS and VA monitor we're using for this video look fairly similar. But this is what the 27-inch OLED monitor looks like from up close. No, this is not a black and white image, but this monitor actually has white subpixels in addition to the red, green and blue subpixels. It's a bit easier to see what's going on with this graphic. You often hear people calling this layout WRGB, or in the case of OLED, WOLED. And quantum.OLED monitors have yet another different structure that looks a bit like this. The big issue with these different pixel layouts is that your PC or whatever device you're using typically expects the display to be structured in this RGB layout that a typical LCD monitor is using. And when that's not the case, like with these OLED panels, some things are gonna look a bit weird. Like, take a look at these folder icons, for instance. There's a pretty visible red board on the left and a green board on the right. You're gonna see this effect on lots of graphics that have sharp edges. Text also is affected. For the most part, though, black text on a white background looks pretty good with clear type. And apps like Word that support clear type, text isn't really looking any worse than on a regular RGB layout display. But watch what happens when I highlight the text. The colored fringes are definitely not looking great. And this is looking quite different on a regular RGB LCD display. The VA panel on top really doesn't show any of this fringing. Quantum dot OLEDs show yet another kind of fringing, which looks different from WOLED panels. But at this point, I think it's pretty clear that both OLED technologies just aren't good for working with text or graphics. You should really consider getting a good old LCD if that's how you use your monitor. Though the weird pixel layout is pretty much a non-issue for things like watching movies or gaming. You might be able to notice fringing with some UI elements or certain crosshair colors. As you can see, some crosshair colors show different colored borders on the W OLED panel. But I don't think this is much of an issue for most gamers. So this doesn't change the fact that OLED is the superior panel tech when it comes to gaming or content consumption. Especially if you're using your monitor for both FPS gaming and watching movies, OLED really is the only panel tech that's really great at both of these things. With IPS or VA, you have to compromise between one or the other. However, everything becomes a whole lot more difficult if you also like to use your monitor during the day or in a brightly lit room, or just like to read a lot of text. You kind of have to pick your poison and live with the drawbacks of either panel tech in this case. But remember that OLED also comes with the risk of burn-in. Artings did a huge investigation on this topic by letting a bunch of different OLED TVs running static content for an extended amount of time. And yeah, these results are quite alarming when you consider that monitors typically have to display a lot of static content. At this point in time though, we don't really know yet if these monitors will behave just like their TV equivalents. But just the fact that burn-in might be an issue will make you use your monitor quite differently. Like you probably want to auto-hide your taskbar and use pretty strict standby settings, maybe even a dynamic wallpaper. Using an LCD monitor instead, honestly, just feels a lot more comfortable as you don't really have to worry about all of these things. But yeah, in return, you're missing out on the amazing black level and contrast. So as I said in the beginning, there are good reasons to get a good old LCD monitor over these fancy new OLEDs, but in some aspects, OLED is just much better than LCD. Which one you should go for really depends on how you're using your monitor. In case you want to learn more about the OLED monitor that we've been looking at in this video, I'd recommend watching my review that's linked on screen right now, which goes into a lot more detail about this monitor. Thanks for watching, bis zum nächsten Video.